These decisions can be the difference between success and failure, not just in running, but in life too. But this minimalist mindset that I'm really interested in isn't just about what's in our packs, it's a philosophy that can guide how we train and how we live our lives. Hi, welcome back to the Pylon Ultra Pod. I'm Paul. Hello to anybody on YouTube. Uh, we're putting a video podcast up now as well as the normal audio, so you can check it out there if you fancy seeing my face and seeing how badly I do these things on camera. Uh, today, I'm really keen to explore a concept that's central to ultra running, at least for me anyway, but that also holds powerful lessons for life, and it's minimalism. Now, as ultra runners, Many of us learn to carry only what we need, at least when we're racing anyway, stripping away the excess to focus on what truly matters. But this minimalist mindset that I'm really interested in isn't just about what's in our packs, it's a philosophy that can guide how we train and how we live our lives. It's something I've been really keen to try and attain over the years with moderate at best success, I guess, if anybody's seen how I've travelled in the past with way too many bags, uh, you'll understand that my struggle with it. Um, but my effort has been there, my intention has been there, and it's something that I continue to be committed to. Um, so in this episode, I'm really keen to dive into how the principles of minimalism in ultra running can lead to a more focused, intentional and fulfilling life overall. When you're out there on the trails, for example, every gram counts. So the longer and harder the run, the more critical it becomes to carry only what you need. For optimal performance, be it on foot, on bike, or any endurance sport overall, there's no room for anything extra. It really should be just about the essentials. And perhaps not for most of us in our training, we can get quite lazy about that, I think, sometimes, and we get used to the stuff that we normally carry that we don't necessarily need for that particular training session. Obviously, some of us will train from time to time for these bigger races with big mandatory kit lists, so it makes some sense to carry a bit more in training, particularly through your long runs as you get closer to the race. But I didn't want to have this conversation get too caught up in the training specifics. Minimalism isn't about deprivation, it's about efficiency and clarity. And even in these bigger races where you do have mandatory kit, that's quite a useful thing to be aware of too. And by reducing what we carry, we can free ourselves to move more fluidly and focus on the experience of the run itself. I also think it should be considered in training too, the sessions that you do and how complicated you make some of those sessions or the whole process has an impact on the results overall. Now, the overriding benefits of minimalism in ultra running are that it teaches us to prioritise. Uh, what do we really need to get through this journey? And it forces us to make some intentional choices, whether it's the gear that we bring, the food that we carry, or the pace that we set when we go out to race or we go out to do that tough long run. These decisions can be the difference between success and failure, not just in running, but in life too. Now, a few years back, I was training for UTMB when I lived in Chamonix. I wanted to do quite a tough session or a tough few days as part of a peak training block and I've quite fancied running the route over a few days. So keeping deliberately keeping the logistics simple and minimal, um, I pretty much packed a bag, a small tent, a sleeping bag, some money and uh, some food. Uh, and the rest I'd agreed in my mind I was just going to sort on the way. So I had a rough idea of where I would probably sleep on the first night, uh, depending how things were going out on the trail, and that was about it. So the overall approach helps to test my own resilience and my own problem-solving capacity, um, and it gave me much more opportunity to just enjoy being out there rather than feeling tied to pre-booked accommodation and, and maybe chasing times and distances to get there by a certain time. So the problem solving opportunities came fairly thick and fast. The main one being, I remember, uh, over on the Italian side on the first night, starting to get dark, it was starting to get really cold once the sun goes down and you're still up pretty high. 
Uh, it can get cold very quickly. You've been running all day, probably a bit sweaty. The wind started picking up. It was pretty cold overall. I thought this is this is a point I can just get my kit out, get the tent out, and get sorted for the night, and then prepare myself for getting up the next day. But uh, I got into that. The wind was picking up. I'm trying to pitch this tent. I realised I hadn't had I didn't have any tent pegs with me at all. Um, so I knew quite early on that that cold wind was going to make things pretty uncomfortable and it kind of tested my problem solving capacity. Um, so that's not that wasn't the only time I've run that route outside of the race itself, but it's certainly one I remember well due to my overall approach and I think it was quite a useful exercise. So just as in running itself, our lives can become cluttered with things that really don't serve as well. And those might be physical possessions, they might be obligations, even our thoughts and emotions. And the minimalist mindset overall invites us to pare that back and to focus on what truly matters and to let go of the rest. Now imagine approaching your life the way you would approach a long trail run. You just wouldn't carry the things that are going to weigh you down, slow you up, or things that you just don't need in order to finish that long run. So why do we do that in our daily lives? We hold on to possessions, relationships or habits that really don't serve us, thinking that they're essential when in reality they're really just baggage. So having travelled a lot to train in places all over the world over the past 10 years, I realised that I was probably at my most content when all the possessions I had for maybe a two or three month period I could carry in one check-in bag and maybe one, well maybe two two carry-on bags but actually I didn't need all that stuff that I had at home and all that stuff I'd collected over the years. You just don't need all the shit that we've got in our lives. The ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak, Hans Hoffman. I also think that everything has a cost, right? I've been thinking about this for a while, really. Um, And if you have, for example, uh, lots of maybe expensive personal possessions, uh, there's a cost beyond that initial investment. These things either need to be stored, they need to be cared for, or they need to be serviced and looked after. And there's also an emotional cost when these things maybe get lost or damaged or the thought of you not having those things anymore causes you some stress and some anxiety. Take these wealthy YouTubers, for example, who maybe have these amazing car collections as part of this massive house that they've got and they've maybe got, I don't know, 10 or 20 top-end vehicles. And it must feel really, really great to have access to these fun cars. But again, there's a price to pay for all of those beyond the initial outlay of these cars. They need time, they need attention, they need servicing, storage and insurance. And you have to physically turn up to turn these cars over uh, every, every now and again. So everything has a cost. Now, I've moved around quite a lot, uh, 2023 we spent living in New Zealand and summer 2024 as well uh, and when it, come, when it came to packing up we knew we were going home uh, and we're getting ready to um, move that life back to the UK and um, you quickly realise that there's a cost attached to all those belongings. Now we didn't go out there and buy lots of stuff, we didn't you know, spend loads of money on furniture or buy lots of stuff when we were out there deliberately because we knew uh, we were only going to be there for a fixed period, but uh, there's always a cost to ownership of these possessions. Stuff either has to be thrown out or it has to be recycled or moved or sold, And then there's the emotional cost on the other side for things that you just can't take with you or you just won't need back in the UK. And it's the same with everything that you have in your life, be it people, possessions, agreements, your employment. There's some kind of tax that's always going to be collected at some point, even though you're likely to maybe never realise it or never want to admit it overall. I think there's a, a freedom that comes with letting go of excess, whether it's the weight in your pack or the clutter in your life. Minimalism isn't about living with nothing, it's about living with enough. It's about making space for the things that really enrich your life and letting go of the things that don't. In ultra running, for example, 
carrying less allows you to move more freely and more efficiently. If you have simple but effective training programs, it gives you more space to focus properly on the quality of your sessions. So in life, simplifying allows you to focus your energy on what brings you joy and fulfillment and meaning. It's about creating space, not just physical space, but mental and emotional space as well. Now, if you're anything like me, you might struggle to say no to commitments. It might be invites from friends or family or people maybe want to pick your brain about a particular topic or something that you maybe have some experience of and, and people will ask you these things quite a lot. And um, we end up doing these things or, or saying yes to them. And I, I do just to be a nice person or to maintain some level of social standing. Now, I'm not suggesting you're 100% selfish and you only do the things that you want to do and nothing else. But why do so many of us drag ourselves into some commitments that we actually dread from, from the outset and we really don't want to do? This is an area for me that I really need to practice. I, I just don't like saying no to people. Um, I don't like that feeling of, of letting people down. Um, even though I end up doing things at times that I really, really don't want to do. And and you might be different. Everybody's different. And, and maybe you've got some some good ways of managing that. And I'd be interested to hear from you if if that's changed over the years. Um, I think we do. I think as we mature, we probably do more of the things that are going to bring us fulfillment than maybe we did when we were a little bit younger. be interested to hear your thoughts on that. Um, so I definitely need to continue to practice that side of things. I just don't like saying no to people. Um, and it ends up bringing a lot of stress into my life um, because I prioritise keeping other people happy than I do over my own happiness sometimes. So what I thought next would be useful is to maybe talk through a few practical uh, steps that you can maybe take to start embracing a little more minimalism in your life and in your training. Uh, the first being, um, I think you should evaluate your essentials. So whether you're packing for a race or organising your life, if you can take inventory of what's truly essential to you, um, you can really work out what's going to help you thrive in your life. You can work out what's really weighing you down and, and things like, what is it that I actually really need to work on in training rather than thinking, I need to do everything. I need everything to be a priority. I think the second one is about letting go of the non-essentials. So if you can start small, maybe it's letting go of an old habit or or just decluttering a space that you have in a house. I know we all have it. We all have that drawer in our house that the junk just goes in. It's got 15 pens and all sorts of stuff that we maybe don't need. Is there something that you could do there? And if you if you take that step, I think it's important to 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 look at it and see how that makes you feel and how does it affect your mindset when you start to clear some of that clutter from your life. Are you, for example, doing a whole load of extra runs just for the sake of it? Are they really benefiting you? Are three strength sessions in a week instead of some high or higher quality run workouts making you a better runner? Or are those strength sessions about feeding another need that you're not being honest about? <clears throat> the third is about focusing on quality over quantity. That might be in kit, in training, or just your life choices. You need to prioritise quality over the numbers. More isn't always better. And you should invest in what truly serves you and let go of the rest. 100 mile weeks is an arbitrary number, but many people still crave them, whether they're helpful or not. So set yourself up to give your absolute best <clears throat> to the training sessions that are going to give you the maximum return. And things like rest days, they're not a weakness. They're there for a reason sometimes. They're there so that you can put more quality into the workout sessions and you can continue to make progress through a training cycle. The fourth I thought about was to practice mindful consumption. So whether that's material goods, so the things that you buy, the orders that you place on Amazon, it might be on uh, consumption of information uh, or even food or just be really mindful about what you consume. And remember things like social media 
is you investing time so it is a consumption thing sometimes and you have a choice on that so you really need to ask yourself is it adding value to your life or is it just filling some kind of void and you can do that in your training too is spending the time over analyzing every single workout you do is it making you a better runner or is it bringing more anxiety to you and your training so what is a true cost of comparison to others as well? It's something that we all do and it's quite common. I see it quite a lot in training too. And you need to ask yourself, is that a beneficial thing? It might be sometimes, but if it's not serving you, let's do less of it. And then finally, I think it's important to regularly reassess. Minimalism should always be an ongoing process and it's not something you're going to crack on day one. I've certainly not and I've... I've invested a fair amount of time trying to get better at it. You need to regularly reassess your possessions, your commitments and even your goals to make sure that they really do align with your values and, and contribute to your well-being. Are you doing that extra race because you really think it's going to help you better prepare for that big goal race or are there other reasons pulling you towards that particular race? And I think you need to be quite honest about that at times. So there's a whole load of books on minimalism that's been around for decades. I think it had a bit of a resurgence maybe a few years ago, particularly around the COVID times. Um, and I read a couple of books then, <clears throat> and that's what kind of spurred me on for the last few years uh, that are definitely worth a quick look. There may be better books out there now. I don't know, but <clears throat> one was called Essentialism by uh, Greg McKeown. Uh, and the second was The Minimalist Way, I think it was called, by Erica Lane. Um, maybe you have some better recommendations. Please do file them on, leave me a comment and I can pick them up and see if I can uh, move it forward and, and get better at that. Um, not just in my training, but in, in my life in general. <clears throat> so in conclusion, I think minimalism and ultra running teaches us to focus on what truly matters. Um, to carry only what we need and to train with a focus on quality so that we can move more freely and efficiently and be much more effective in our racing. But this mindset doesn't have to end when we leave the trails. By applying these principles to our, <clears throat> to our normal day-to-day -day lives, we can create space for what truly matters and we can let go of the excess that really does weigh us down. And as you move forward in your training and in your life, I really do encourage you to try and embrace simplicity because sometimes less truly is more. Until next time, keep running your race your way and remember to focus on what matters most. If you enjoyed the episode, please do subscribe, particularly if you're on YouTube and you're watching on YouTube. Um, Please leave a review if you're on the audio podcast or let me know what you think or share it with a friend. Um, also, if you have an idea on a topic or you would like to talk to any of our coaching team about running, about the podcast or anything else, please do get in touch. And why don't you come and hang out with us on September 20th to 22nd? Uh, it's our weekend running retreat in the Scottish Highlands. It's XP7, it's called Pylon Experience 7. And we still have some tickets left, so you can find out more on the website at pylonultra.com. We'd love to see you there for some run chat, some good runs and loads of fun and laughter. Uh, so please do check it out and uh, come and join us in the Highlands. I will speak to you all later. Thanks for listening. Bye.